Yes, welcome. Shelter Footycast live from Backchat Studios, AFL Round 11 Review. Skeeter, how are you? How was your weekend? How going? Okay, Scoey. Uh, lots of footy and uh, lots of poor tipping, but that's just sort of part of my DNA oh, now, yeah. and I'm going to give you an absolute whack through the course of this show because you just led uh, Jaden and myself completely down the garden path. Oh, that's and again, yeah. like yep. an evangelist, I followed you and just mm. was bowing to your... It, it was almost as if it was, it was a fait accompli. So it was Not, my fault. That you went bad in tipping. Is that right? No, no. There's saying? one game that you were completely off the mark. But anyway, I'm n- not tipping Richmond again. Do you know what you got this week on this three. show? Three. I got three no. in my footy tipping. Do you know what you got this week on this show? What did I get? Two. Yeah. Well, and you didn't even pick a roughie. Do you remember what you did? I picked Collingwood to win by more than 70. Right. And so that's not included. You got two right and you didn't pick a roughie. How are you going? Not great. But You're I, I, coming at me. I got five. And I picked Richmond. Yeah, Richmond's shot. <laughs> two. Two out of nine, Skeeter. You got your eyes closed, mate. <laughs> two. <laughs> Don't start, because I also had Boston at minus two and a half yesterday at half time. Well, they led by 10 with three to go. 10 points. I wasn't comfortable because I never am. They win by one. Ah, oh, unreal. I love it. Love hearing it. I reckon we need to get you on a punting podcast. Uh, socials, Shelter Footycast. You can follow us over there. Footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. A couple of questions to get to at the end of this one, Skeeter. Our thirsty camel clanger of the week. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shelters at any thirsty camel going around, Skeets. We're going to come up with your, your thing you saw over the weekend that you just were like, oh my gosh, what was going on? And then in the opposite sense, Froth Town. What we frothed on this weekend, Skeeter. We did you have any beers? Did you have any beers this weekend? Uh, I had lunch on Friday and uh, had a few afterwards at, at the shoe. And <laughs> you, the, the shoe is your. So oh, just, just they, they, they've got shelters on tap there. They've got shelters, absolutely. That's where we, we met the boys before for a bite to eat. So yeah, I'll go there for a look and then have, have a dark coloured drink and then <laughs> go home and then back up again. But that's all, all good. No, I have lunch on Friday, by the way, with Justin Langer who. Of course, going over to cover some test cricket shortly, but he was uh, he was not overly really impressed with the coverage of what was happening with um, the Eagles board and the supposed split. So he was uh, he was he was up and about. JL JL should not consume no. media. He gets but he's, a he's firing. Bit he's defensive. Up, well, it's a little bit wound up by mainstream media. I reckon if I consumed mainstream media, I probably would too. Yeah, true. Why, why would you do that disservice to yourself as such a professional? Why would you bother reading that absolute genuine rag that's going around at the moment? Froth Town, <laughs> what we frothed on the weekend, uh, August 18 and 19, Claremont Showground Skeeter. We've booked you in. We've cleared the weekend. You're going to be there. August 18, 19, is it? Froth, frotheth, frotheth on some froths down at the Froth Town. Uh, we're going to get you stuck in all the beers all around there. Let's get into it. Big moments of the round. Uh, Look, I'm going to start with this one. Well, your cup. Well, your Fla- cup. Flag you up. <laughs> flag mantle. It's back, baby. They're yeah, back. They are back and uh, absolutely credit to them. And uh, look, they've they played really good footy. And you, you did call this is, this is what they're doing in the last month. They're just being able to put together their brand of footy. And they did it again on the weekend. Did Skater pick Melbourne? Jay. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, you picked Melbourne. Well, I've got two, you dicks. Of course, I. It's very rare. Every time you ask this question, there's going to be only two times I said yes. I tipped the winning side. So we know that I had a bad weekend on the on the punt uh, and the tip. <laughs> Correct. So uh, Fremantle win at the MCG. I think the buy is coming. A bad time. Yeah, they've got some real momentum at the moment. We'll get through that game a little bit, but I just did, I did want to roll those l- lovely play on words that are wrong here at the moment. Uh, Skeet, I'm not sure if you know, mate, but it was a round of upsets this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, and I've just done. I did some stats, by the way. Of there's stats. been 25 games this year decided by 12 points and under. Yes. I have had one of those 12 go in my favour. A bit like <laughs> Richmond, absolute tripe. I am Sydney win, Hawthorne win against from, from nowhere. Yep, Dockers beat Melbourne. That's an upset. GWS beat Geelong in Geelong. That's a massive Big upset. upset. How do I get five? Gold Coast. Uh, I don't know if you did. I think I did. So no. you so you tipped Hawthorne, did you? No. Okay, fair enough. You picked the Giants, did you? No. Okay, fair enough. You picked Gold Coast, did you? No. Okay. Um, you tick tick North Melbourne? No. And you got everyone else right, did you? Well, you that's, Richmond. That's Richmond. Tips were, yes. And Richmond. 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 You tipped Richmond. I know that for a fact. 
Uh, yeah, so keep putting yeah. your fingers up. There's five. So you're starting to actually. What the was truth, this one? The I'm truth's sure. getting the, the truth's getting away of your story here because what, we're suddenly finding what matches. About this in, one? Yeah. Did I get this one right? <laughs> I think you've Sydney got, Hawthorne Dockers GWS Suns Adelaide. We'll go through it as we get through. But there was a big there was big upsets all week. Like yeah, absolutely outrageous upsets. Yes, completely cooked them. Um, uh, one match ban to Jago Amira. See that one? Yeah, I reckon they have to challenge. They have to challenge. I don't think he'll get off. I don't think he will either, which is just crazy. Yeah. Um, was it was it a bit now? I only saw it last night. Was was it a bit of a chicken wing in that sense or not? Was well, it, was he it... had the one arm pinned. It wasn't. I didn't think it was a double action. It was a dump, but it was a single action dump. So strong tackle. Um, just the way the tribunal's going at the moment. I think they'll challenge. I think he won't get off. I couldn't agree with you more. Rory Laird uh, called that game yesterday. He did exactly the same thing. He should get a week. And unfortunately, and it was and it was nothing as well. Both mm. players got straight back up. It was Lockie Neal in that game. Uh, in this game, it was Charlie Spargo was the player. Spargo, yep. his hair brushed the ground, got straight back up, and Jago Mira is going to get a week. I think it's disappointing. Yeah, it is. I think players are pretty quickly getting better at the tackle. Yes, bringing the player to ground. So on that basis, so they, they lose two. Uh, the Dockers, they lose two in the short term. What, um, what did you make of the Nathan Buckley in the Freo box? Anything to read there or just nah, move on? I think Justin Longley and him have a good relationship. And you know what? They'll get a bit of feedback from, from Bucks and, and maybe just a, a different set I thought of it was eyes. a good move. Yeah. I mean, imagine getting Nathan Buckley. He's, what did he coach for 10 years probably at, at the Collingwood Footy Club. Get him in, see how they're communicating. That's what they would have been doing. Hey, look, he's, he's looking, as you say, for just those little things I reckon that, that might be able to, to enhance their, their coach day sort of output so yeah I, people jumped to I Buck, love that. Buckley coming back to coaching but nah. my mind went straight to well how smart's that by Longmuir use your contacts Nathan Buckley would have seen it done it um, more than Justin Longmuir would have ever done mm. and they've obviously got a great relationship given the time that he spent as t- coach of Collingwood so um, as in JL so yeah I thought it was thought it was very good uh, West Coast on the other side um Disappointing. We'll get into those games right now. Let's start with West Coast. We've done a little bit of Freo chat already. Essendon defeat West Coast by 50 points. Blows out a little bit late. It was competitive. But I thought overall, it was one of the more boring games of football I've called this year. The yeah. way the way the game played out, it was not contested. There was no highlights. It was a chipmark game. Essendon play that brand. I, I, it, was, it was boring. Mm. Well, it's also... Sort of predictable. Uh, Eagles did win the inside 50 count, which I, I would suggest probably their first time was, since... Was f- no, it was their first time this year. Even against the Giants yep. when they won, they, they lost that. So um, that being said, when you come up with 48 to 46 inside right. 50s, but then you end up kicking, what is it, a, a paltry six goals. Uh, look, Oscar Allen needed support. They used Tommy Barris early in attack, but I think after about... 10 minutes or less than that. They kicked the first three goals of the game. They changed it over. And they thought we better put our uh, best and fairest winning full back back in his position. Well, that's the thing. People ask for change. You know, throw up the magnet ball, you know, that, that sort of stuff. That's why it's, the coaches, dare I say it, by and large, know best. Oh, look, I know it's all, all fine in hindsight, but I actually think Tom Barras has a bit of merit in front of the footy. He's a strong mark. He competes well. But I'd almost start him at full back. First 10 minutes just to make sure you don't get jumped, mm. exactly like, like what happened. Let him shore it up, because in the end, the, the three goals would have been on Tom Brass's man. So that's why they would have blinked, because... And fair he, enough as well. Yeah, so he goes back. Um, Rep Bazzo was the guy sort of getting touched up. They didn't want to get you know five, six, seven goals on in the first quarter. They put him back behind the wall, and they actually steadied the ship. They scored two goals, three, 15, for the... It was something like the eighth time this season. They broke the all-time record, VFL, AFL history, for a team to start with the same score in, yeah, it was eight games. It's their eighth time this year that at quarter time, two goals, three. No one's ever done it before. That is bizarre. That's the best thing West Coast done all season. Uh, <laughs> Oscar Allen kicks four, of course. Uh, Luke, Luke Edwards and Dom Sheed, um, both injured on the day. Dom Sheed looked more serious than Luke Edwards, although Luke Edwards was a concussion, mm-hmm. so he may miss, um, given they don't have the bye next week. Look, overall, mate, I don't know what we can break down here. I was, I was bored by it. Yeah, I, I think just seeing Elliot Yo make a, a successful comeback, oh, yeah. he's a bit yeah. rusty. I thought Shannon Hearn, unfortunately, at the age of 35, he's, he's, still, playing, he's playing next year, just so you know. He's, he's going on, is he? he? I haven't spoken to him, but he's playing next year. I, I can... 
I can see it in the way but he's he, playing. But isn't he that sort of bloke that if he gets a chance to go around, he'll go again? He will be playing next year. No one's come out and put their hat on that. Shannon Hearn will play next year. So what are the reasons behind the club saying well, go around? Well, well, like I've been banging on about, you can't just clear out your senior players and have no senior players no. in the football club. So if you're picking senior players, he still perform. Like he was one of their best. Was he in the best? You get your paper there. Um, was he in the best players? Shannon Hearn? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. What's well, listed there? What are you gonna do? You know, you make him retire. He's in their best players, so that's why he's in their best players. That's 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 the reason. Nick Nanaui's not. Jeremy McGovern's not. Luke Shuey's not. He's not. They're not playing. Shannon Hearn is. So, yeah. so you're 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 not suggesting that those guys go. Before no, no, bang but you're, up. no, no, no. But you're asking why you keep Shannon Hearn. Well, he's in their best players. No, no, why I keep Shannon? Just the, the justification. It'll be 36 later this year. Doesn't um, matter. He's in their best players. Well, that's and it, it, I'll not say this with all due respect. It's sad that he's. Oh, absolutely. Any of the best they players. Be. No. You get to that age and you should be a role player. Um, but, I mean, if you look around the competition, Dave Mundy did it. He was still getting in the best players. Scott Pendlebury. Would he, would, but, well, Dave would still be getting a game, we assume, this year, if he'd gone around. Dave Mundy? Yeah. No? Maybe. Yeah. He would have been on fringe. But, but yeah. Because, I mean, they added a bit of depth in that area, yeah. didn't they? So, yeah. it, it would have been, you know, it would have been decisions being made. Whereas Shannon Hearn... You're not making a decision on him at the moment. So I think he plays next year for sure. Yeah, I don't think he's a certainty to go around. But, I mean, at that age, there's no certainties in anything. But he's been terrific since he's come back. And as I said, having Tommy back in, Tom Barras, Hearn, Yo, just gives him a bit more steel. And uh, Duggan, I thought, again, off halfback, really good with 30-plus touches. And Jaden Hunt, his best game for the Eagles, I believe. Yeah, well, people are blowing up about getting Jaden Hunt to the football club. But he was a good player in a Melbourne side. Of course, he's going to be a good player in West Coast side. He'd be... Top five in their best and fairest at the moment. Uh, you picked this one right, Skater. Congratulations. You picked Essendon. What well, well I mate. Well, you'll up defeat Nam by seven points. Big, big game at the MCG. They were outstanding for her. Watch this game. They were very, very, very good, Skater. Did you call it? No, I did not. Um, I was preparing to go to uh, Optus, but I did did watch the game. And it was a real arm wrestle, wasn't it, really, for, for a half. And they just... We're able to storm. I mean, look, let's be honest. If you if you look back at it now, not having Lockie Hunter and particularly um, Oliver in that lineup yep. for, for Nam hurt them on the weekend. But it, full credit to what uh, the Dockers are doing. And and look, off the back of their win, and we, we go through all that, a bit of chatter about Sean Darcy about whether, given the work that Luke Jackson did when in he his absence out, yeah. in the ruck, that Sean Darcy, at the peak of his powers, and it, look, I'm not going to bag the suggestion because. We often say, well, why, didn't you, why don't you trade someone? Well, it's finding that right balance in the player's career where you think, okay, we can get something else in. There's talk that he could be up on up at the end of the year for trade. I, I, can't, I can't see Fremantle doing that. Well, okay, the, the, the opposite is keep him at the football club. I would say, you know, take away the, the injury. He'd be very close to number two Ruckman in the comp behind exactly. Tim English. Um, so what, so I reckon the, that wins you a premiership. I reckon that's the sort of play you need in the grand final. So the question is, what what Stop are you trade? What are you trading him out to Nothing. get? That, that's what I'm. Oh, that's the question I'm asking. Well, if they want to and do that, good luck to them. I I, I think that they they they'd burn the stadium. I I, I think, man, he's a heart and soul guy for them. If he wants to go and get traded, fair, fair enough, different matter. But if yeah, Freo yeah. are walking to the table with no, they won't the be. second Surely. best player at the position, they're not walking him out the door. And with I guess unless you, you know, that's not saying he won't get traded. If he wants to leave, yeah, no, I agree. Okay, no. but if Freo is not walking up to someone and go, "Hey, what do you want to give us for Sean Darcy?" Are you? No, not doing that. No, I agree. Uh, so he, he goes out. Jackson steps up. Um, thought Pierce was really good in defence, and look, they had Brayshaw's. Uh, I reckon in the votes again, Brownlow wise. So yeah, they've, they've they've got some some really good upside. Uh, just that only issue is having the buy now. You're right, although. You know, yeah, Darcy, Darcy out, gives, so, give yeah. Darcy a bit, bit of a, a chop out, and maybe only misses two games. I reckon he might. Uh, you usually, you usually miss two games with a hammy because it's a it's a twenty one day, yeah, mm. twenty one day turnaround. So touch and go. Yeah, I think he'll be pretty close to playing that game out of the buy. Uh, sorry, post game, post mm. buy. Um, Shooter Schultz, uh, he's very come into second place in my favourite players in the AFL. We know um, Shay Bolton is yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine is Tom Liberatore. But Shooter Schultz has just slipped his way nicely into second favourite player to watch. Mate, he had no touches in the first half. Seven tackles. 
that's just I love that shit. Yeah, like, and it was stuff that it love it. It was stuff that reminded me last year at the MCG. Well, same round, I think. It was, it was so many similarities. And and uh, Schultz hasn't he been important to them in those four victories? What yep. he does, they're tackling pressure going up. And again, I'll go back to Joy Amos, um, young bloke that's you know kicked I think ten goals um, or nineteen goals in ten games this year. There was one piece of play in the last quarter where he's has the ball inside the centre square. Forward line bereft of anyone. Yep. Had the smarts to hold, bide some time, go laterally to Aish, got it back, I think, and then Schultz kicks the goal at the end. That, to me, is a smart footballer. I just think he's growing right before our eyes. And in two or three years, there's talk of him being, you know, the next best forward since Pavlich at the Dockers. Well, that's probably going to be right in the fullness of time. But he's still he's still sort of gangly looking, yeah. isn't he? he doesn't look, he's not this Charlie Kerno looking specimen of an athlete. Which I think is a positive thing. Um, don't don't mistake my words there. I I think at a junior level and and development programs and pathways and all these hot keywords that we like using, we get caught up with looking at these kids and we want the one ninety five centimeter midfielder. We want the Greek Adonis. Yeah, we want the you know two hundred centimeter Max King, reach key forward. I don't know how tall Jai Amos is. Amos, Jai, Jai Amos is. But he's not 195. He's got a beast. He's only 193. He's a bit under. He's, he's skinny. He's gangly. But he's smart. He's got a footy brain. And he's also leading a lead up forward. So that sounds like his biggest strength is what he does, his patterns. And he mm. can't teach that. And so we get so caught up in what these players maybe you know look like or that, how they test. But sometimes you just got to look at the, with your eyes and the eye test and go, well, he can play footy. Don't care what he looks like. Don't care how big he is. Don't care how quick he is. Because he doesn't look overly quick either. But he's just a gun. So I think it's a great get by Freo. Um, Matty Johnson in that ilk, he looked very good coming on for Sean Darcy. Josh Tracy continues to improve. They've got a lot of ticks at the moment, the Freo footy club, and I've been excited to watch it, Skeeter. Yeah, and despite all that, and you're falling back in love with them, they're not inside the eight, which... No, no, it's just, um, it's just the, the way it is, and it's... History says, I mean, what are we, round 11? Tends not to change too much. But you just get the feeling this year might. because Who's, who's in there? Who's in the bottom? Who's eight? So Eston currently in the eight, but they're going to be vulnerable. No, they, no I reckon they're going to play finals. They've got, they got um, a good run home, haven't they? Again, North Kangaroos Melbourne. Again, yeah, yeah so, so perhaps that, that there. Adelaide, I've been bullish on all year. Mate, and they're, play, they're making finals. They're playing finals footy. Uh, Bulldogs, I still think, will play finals footy despite what happened at the yes. weekend. Um, St Kilda might be the vulnerable one. Yes, they are. And they're, they're also, mind you, they're a game and percentage ahead of Fremantle. So um, you, you suspect there'll be, I think, probably one more change. I'm not sure. Oh. The, you when you look at it like that, though, it's, it's yeah. It's tight. And put it this way, we'll get to Geelong, but wow, there's there's a there's almost a shut the door time for the Cats um, coming up. What do you mean? Well, in terms of winning the flag. Oh, I thought you meant season. Well, that is, that is this. I mean, yeah, if they don't right. win back-to-back flags, that's a, you know, if you win the flag the previous year, then... And you tip them to, to do that, mm. then yeah. That, don't that, bring my tips into this, mate. Well, this is, you've this is about given you me twenty today. minutes of well, just slagging well, off this of is my about footy. Who did you who did you pick? You picked Melbourne. That's right. All right. Uh, Will Schofield, Mark Reddings, Shelter Footycast. <laughs> Sydney defeat Carlton by twenty six. Skeeter picked Carlton. Good job, mate. Uh, Sydney. Absolutely sizzling. <laughs> it's a big win. Carl. Sizzling. They're going shite. You've just given them a big rap. And yeah, fair enough. They 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 beat said, up on Carlton. Have you heard their fans? You've heard their fa- Carlton fans? Oh, they're, they're mental. R- like, ropeable. absolutely ropeable. Ringing up 3OW, just absolutely feeding it to anyone. And any- It's fair enough. I wrote an article about West Coast and how I do understand the, you know, angst in West Coast fans, but you've had it pretty good, guys. Carlton... They've been a shit football club for 20 years. Yeah. They have. There's no, there's no better way to say it. Best best foot footy they were playing was about 2010, 11. Like, they were, they were top four. Like, it, they, they, they haven't been good. Like, Paddy Cripps, a Brownlow medalist, hasn't played in a final in his career. Mm. Not one. Wow, that's a big call. Yeah. That's, and and it, have they got the list? They've got, they look like they've got the list to do it, haven't they? Well, you'd think so, but I, yeah... I'm not quite sure what happens behind the closed doors. They look at stages like they're trying to take a leaf out of Geelong's book and move it quickly to their big forwards in Mackay and Kerno. I don't know how much more we can speak about Harry Mackay, by the way. He's, I, 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 I watched this one. He looks, he, he looks now physically rattled. Like he, he's got, he gets the ball and he's closing his eyes and 
he's like hot, he's gone. Yeah, he's actually cooked it. Mentally shot. Yeah, but yeah. he can physically see it now. I reckon three or four weeks ago he was still sort of you know half confident that he could go around and snap the ball. Now he's missing it. They keep the camera on him. He's that anxious about it. He kicked three behinds. Kerno kicked one three. They've butchered their way out of this, Carlton. Yeah, and let's not just throw the blame on on Harry for their woes. They've you know they've got the midfield that gets so much of the footy. They're they're butchering it though. What did they kick? What was their they, they kick six fifteen? Well, six fifteen. Yeah. So you know you're not going to win games of footy. It was twenty two scoring shots to twenty one in favour of Sydney. Uh, off the back of what we spoke about Geelong, last year's grand finalists may not make the finals full stop. I mean, yes. Sydney uh, Sydney's not getting there. Are you going to say? You know, say oh, yeah, and you and you pick. No, that no, side. I'm just saying Sydney and Geelong okay. could be quite extraordinary. When's the last time, for instance, two grand finalists didn't make the finals next year? Just a question that no. might be answered. Dip, not by, <laughs> not by me. I don't know the answer. <laughs> I just want to throw it for Jay. No Jane. idea. <laughs> Uh, That's quite clever for me on Monday. Yeah, very good, Skeeter. <laughs> well done. Um, Hawthorne defeats St Kilda uh, by 10 points. Oh, no, no one's picking that. I'm nah, sorry. Yeah, well, here's that. my hard luck punting story. I have St Kilda to win 1-39. to 39. Just one of them. Uh, 15 points, I think, they're in front. <laughs> Ball comes inside 50. In fact, to the top of the square, Jack Higgins. <laughs> Chest mark. Drops. <laughs> I think he's already thinking of the celebration about what he's going to do. Drops the chest mark. From that point on, and I'm a bit, I'm a bit superstitious because when I turn the TV on to watch a, a game that I'm invested in, it goes completely against me. So I tend to <laughs> have the TV off, which doesn't help when you're going to do podcasts and talk about it on so, radio. So you turn it off. I, was, I didn't turn this off because it was like I could see the train crash cr- coming. Hawthorne absolutely flew home. They kicked five goals in yep. the last quarter yep. um, to one St Kilda. And they turned what looked like a regulation victory and a, and a nice little it. collect for myself, one to 39. They, they won easily by 10 points. It wasn't even close. <laughs> and um, there was one bloke, in all seriousness, that deserves... He's copped a week's suspension. James Sicily played one of the better games as captain this year. It was outstanding. 42, 42 yep. disposals. And just plays with vigour, plays with grunt, and, and talk about carrying a team on his shoulders. And we've seen the... We'll go through these matches. The captains in many of these games, even Oscar Allen yep. as an acting captain... Terrific on the weekend. I thought he was outstanding. Uh, Alex Pierce, as we talked about with what uh, Wally Lup did. But this guy, James Sicily, it was out of this world. Uh, 21 intercept possessions, 11 score involvements as a centre-half back, uh, 628 metres gain. He was everywhere. I agree with you, mate. It was a great game. Um, the midfielders of Hawthorne are starting to lift. I think that's what they're building this from. Um Day continues to improve. Like he's moving up into echelons of very, very good midfielders in the competition. Jake Newcomb does his thing every week. Connor Nash, his story over the last like that, that he didn't start in the midfield this year. And the last five weeks, he's had something like twenty eight touches, twenty nine touches, twenty seven, thirty, thirty one. Like he's getting a bit of it. I don't know if you've ever stood next to him. He's massive. He's a massive man um, to run around in the midfield. Max King um, returns with four goals again, so he's going back to back big games. But can't get it done. I think they're they're I think they're vulnerable. The vulnerable. Yeah, I think they're the vulnerable ones in the eight that Fremantle can potentially jump. Um, they've got sound defence, a good back line, but the way they play, um, I think, enables teams to be able to do what Hawthorne did. If they can't hold the damn wall long enough, teams steamroll them. And then when they when it's a good side, I'm not saying Hawthorne's not good, but they're, they're not going that well. When a good side picks up the pace on them, they can't keep with them. Yeah, and in the last. Few minutes, I think three minutes to go. They they pushed some numbers back um, when they had the lead, and there was a hit up ball to Mitch Lewis inside fifty, which offered so much space that Ross Lyon must have been gobsmacked with the inability to defend. So now nah, the Saints are disappointing Hawthorne, and for all the talk of tanking, they're uh, they're in sixteenth spot, and they're only half a game behind the Giants, and only. One game behind, uh, half a game behind Richmond, sorry, and closing in on the Giants and Carlton. They're actually, they're actually looking really promising long term. Oh, I think we've missed the thirsty camel clanger of the week, Skeeter. I think Jack Higgins has got to be the one for you, doesn't it? Because you were banging on about this when he came into the yeah. radio. You're banging on about it at Optus. Yeah, that is that's it certainly classifies as the thirsty camel. It's not my one specifically. I'm okay. going to let you take that because I've got one. Okay, oh, no, I don't need it. I've actually got one that I missed in the other game, West Coast. Uh, I'm watching. I'm sitting out watching the game, right? So this is the Thirsty Camel clanging of the week. Uh, don't 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 run out of your favourites. Grab your shoulders, the Thirsty Camel. I'm watching, and I see Jaden Hunt, and he's come off bench, mm. right? 
and I'm watching him I'm like, geez, he looks like he's running weird. He's got one boot on. He's running onto the field with one boot. Jacob Brennan, former teammate of mine. I saw the sole. Monkey Brennan. Mm. No, mate. It wasn't just the sole. He swapped his boot. He bought one boot out for 20 minutes he's playing for one that boot. quarter. He, no, he was playing. With, he ran out with one boot. Jacob Brennan chased him out. He put another boot on. So he was wearing opposite boots on for that quarter. He's had an absolute howler on the bench. I'm not sure what's going on. He's an absolute clanger. He was running around with two opposite boots on for the entire quarter. So this is the fault of Jacob Brennan. Uh, I don't know whose fault it is. <laughs> I actually don't know whose fault it is, but I thought it was a Thirsty Camel clanger of the week. Be cool. Yeah, get your, get your shoulders down at Thirsty Camel. Uh, let's keep moving through the game. GWS, oh, and you picked uh, you picked St Kilda, yep. Uh, GWS defeat Geelong. Who, who did you pick? Oh, I picked St Kilda, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Well, Jaden's the one who told me I got five. He can't have got five. I think I got five. Who did you got five? Wait, yeah. it's bull dust. That's who, crap. Oh, I got, I got Freo, Essendon, Sydney, Collingwood, and Adelaide. Okay, you got five then. You got to stick it up your ass. <laughs> GWS <laughs> defeat Geelong. Well, my match was four, but anyway, that's <laughs> defeat. Oh, you and I don't think we should be left county abacuses again. GWS defeat Geelong Big by win. seven. Huge victory, massive, and totally they've actually, green. They've done it a bit down there. They've actually won down in Geelong a few times over the last five years. That was just a huge win, and you know what? I talked about. I'm going through this theme of captaincy and how they've inspired their teams. Toby Green, two hundredth game. Game, captain, four goals, bang. He is, he's the cream of the crop when it comes is, to just. Is he, mo- is he moving up the board of your favourite players to watch? Well, he always has been. I think yeah. Everyone, I mean, he's one of those players you, you sort of hate when he's yeah. playing against you, but he's just a elite footballer. And you could tell when they were challenged because they led by the best part, of, I think, four goals midway through the last quarter, and the Cats were always going yeah. to mount some challenge. They looked as if in the last five minutes they'd be overrun. To show you what the Giants did, I think, in respect to to uh, Toby and how much he's loved, I, I'm, I'm guessing, is is what they did. They That's a famous win for that, them. That was their third straight win at Cadenia Park against Geelong. Really? Yeah. That's That has to be a record. Yeah, absolutely, given Geelong's record over there over the mm. last 15 years. Yeah. So I respect to Tom Hawkins and Joel Selwood, and it's the most winningest uh, home ground advantage in the AFL by a long, long stretch. So GWS have obviously figured something out. I don't know quite what it is, but they play with pressure. They, they mm. bring um, you know, big heat around the footy and then they take their chances in front of the goal. Uh, you don't have to, you know, it's, it's, I talk about it a fair bit. The fundamentals is what you have to do. Now, um, tell me, tell me the name of the Irish lad who debuted. Do you know how to pronounce it? Yeah. Um, Oyson Mullen. I think it's, I think it's, there's an H in there somewhere. Oh, it's really? spelt O-I-S-I-M. I think it's... Hoisin. Uh, okay. Hoisin. So we've got it right. I don't know. I actually don't know. I thought you might know what no, it was. No, I've never so, heard. That's the first time I've seen his name. Wait. So do you know who this kid is? He's, he's the Nick, Nick Dacos of the Gaelic Footy League. That's really? how he was described by uh, Zach Tui during the week. He said it would be like going and get Nick Dacos and going and play. He's the big up-and-coming young star of that, that league. Played his way at Geelong. Debut was pretty good as well. Didn't kick a goal, but he was pretty good for them. Um, Geelong had three Irish players play, the most of all time. Breaks a VFL AFL record. You didn't do them a lot of good, though, did it? Uh, Mark O'Connor, Zach Dewey and Hoyson uh, <laughs> Mullen. Uh, Jesse Hogan took a big hanger over yeah, to Tony. Massive mark. Yep, very good. Um, and you picked Geelong. Uh, I, I did as well. Gold Coast defeat Western Bulldogs by seven. Um Another big defeat, another big upset. I picked the Western Bulldogs. I oh, know, so did you. They kicked their fir- the first three goals of the game. Um, they led by 20 points. This is the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. And then it was all over she wrote. To full credit to the Gold Coast Suns. And that was a that's a huge win for them with Lukosius kicking five. Uh, ben King amongst the goals with two. Uh, Lukosius best on um, against... Uh, the Bulldogs up in the NT, and they're back there this week, by the way. He had he kicked four of those five in the second quarter, Lukosius. So he was outstanding. Matty Rowell has a bit of a munch on the grass. They, the Channel 7 asked him about it. What's going on here? And so his description, without quoting it, um, he's obviously doing a fair bit of mindfulness. So, um, Skeeter, I'm not sure if you've partaken in mindfulness. No, or I've, I've, I've sit there quietly contemplating life. Well, but 
that's a different type of mindfulness. <laughs> but uh, look, basically, one of the key elements is you, you, you take in your surroundings. So with your sight, and you, you feel, you touch the grass, you listen. This sounds like all shit to me, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's been scientifically proven as one of the great oh. mental strategies to go overcome uh, adversity in life. And Mark Redding describes it as all shit. Anyway, oh, a bit of a bit of a bit of garbage. But anyway, he's taking it to a new level because yeah, you do the you do the sound, you do the sight, you do the feel, you do all your senses. But he's fucking eating the grass. It tastes. <laughs> He like takes he's the lost cake. Plot. Like, he takes the cake. I'm sorry. He's a different cat, isn't he? Well, yeah, and I, I've done my best to sort of, you know, um, you know, support people being different. And, but uh, honestly, that's just you've got to get him like, on. It's fucking carry on. You've got to that, get him on. That's the, on genuine the, carry on. On like, back chat, you've got to get him on. I and do. Have a yet I, to him. I do. Talk him. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point because like it's genuine, just absolute. I don't know what he's thinking. He's, he's cooked it um, before the game. Said eating grass grounds him. Skater grounds, grounds him. him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, Nick Holman played his hundredth game in this one. Um, look, I, I had I had Western Bulldogs as my top four sort of power rank sides in the AFL at the moment. I thought they were absolutely steaming. I spoke mm. to an assistant coach at the Western Bulldogs before this game, and they were um, definitely on high alert for this game um, in Darwin. It changes. It like changes so slippery the foot. Yeah, it just changes the way the game goes, and and I think they certainly knew it was a big game, and they weren't able to do it. Interestingly enough, Gold Coast are playing in Darwin next week. That's what I said. Yeah, they've got back to back games. I wasn't listening, obviously. No, so. no, you gave me the, the flick. They've got Adelaide up there again. It's a night game, as you would do. They stay it. there. They stay in Darwin. I, that's a good question. I don't know if we're, we're the go from there to the Gold Coast to back. That's a lot of travel. I've done well. I've, I don't reckon they'll be travelling, and I've done two footy trips in Darwin, and I don't reckon. It's the exact, dangerous. I don't reckon it's the exact spot you want an AFL footy club for a week. <laughs> it's so, man, it's unreal. It's the best. There pubs everywhere. It's funny. Bit of fishing. I actually went and did a, I say, a couple of Foxtel Cup games up there. Barry Hall and uh, Ben Dixon and might have been, uh, not me, but as a group, we might have been told to leave the establishment at one point. Which one? The hotel? Oh, I, I, no, not the casino. It was one of those pubs on, on the strip there. So, no, it was just... just Nicely. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, yeah, you've had enough on your way. <laughs> Fair enough. But at least as we walked out, anyone trying to pick a fight, I said, just, hey, speak to this bloke. So Barry Hall was just floating in the wings. That's very good. Uh, Port Adelaide defeat Richmond by 10 points. You picked. Uh, and I picked. No, now, this is my thirsty camel. Thirsty camel? Yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, the clanger? Yes. Clanger of the way. Belongs yeah, to you, that. you numb nut. Me. Absolutely. Me. If we could just replay what you said last Thursday in the most emphatic terms, he, I, was, I was saying, I'm not sure who to tip in this game. Port Adelaide's a form team. You shut me down. You went no. through the greatest monologue yeah. of why Richmond were the greatest living certainties to win the game. <laughs> yeah, I've were. looked at my phone after 20 minutes. It was four goals to zip. And I, I thought, you seriously, Scully, you absolute prick. You've done me over here. Oh, and you you in the long, thirsty. <laughs> Clanger. I mean, it's one thing tipping poorly and being an absolute muppet like yes, I am. Yes. But for you to go out on a limb and stake your reputation on Richmond. No. Who, who at this can- stage, that <laughs> reputation's not much. So, no, I'm giving that to you, brother. Well, I don't know what to tell you, mate. Don't listen to me. I mean, I, I'm the one who got five tips. I mean, yeah, so. but that was the one that I put my. I thought, oh, you know what? I, I get that right. I suddenly jump up. Anyway, uh, Port Adelaide to got three. the jump. No, no, I got three. Anyway, Toronto was huge for, yes. for Richmond. Four goals and yes. what did he get? Thirty plus. Thirty three touches, four goals. That's a huge game for the um, outside the 150 pl- AFL players in the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is, is Zach Butters? Uh, Racking up some Brownlow votes? Yeah, absolutely is. I mean, Ollie Wines is sort of non-existent this year off the back of a pretty injury-interrupted preseason. Uh, Connor Rose, I actually get them confused sometimes, so I wonder if umpires do a little bit as well. It could, yeah, it could go cool. both ways. It, it, it could... You know, I don't, this, the impact on the game, mate, I don't think it's outrageous. What, to get the two players mixed up? Yeah, well, no, not mixed up, but just impact on a game. If you've got someone that kind of plays the same way, doing similar mm. things, you might just think their impact slightly more. Does that make sense? Mm. No, I've, I, th- you're right though. Butters and Rosie at times, I sort of have to double check if I'm commentating. But Port Adelaide, that, let's be honest, they are, they're bound for the top. They're well, second. Eight, is that eight in a row? They're second. They won eight in a row? They've, They've won, definitely won seven. They have been right, um, outstanding and that's a, that's a huge win for them, uh, albeit MCG and uh, Richmond not going that flash. But they, you know, forget playing finals they're there it's now quite a question of can they finish top four can they finish top two and you look at the top four as it, as it stands uh, Collingwood Port Adelaide Brisbane Melbourne um, justifiably they're, they're uh, amongst those teams and uh, it means that Kenny Hinkley sure, surely that's going lock him away for another two years now are they the best side in the comp other than Collingwood are they the second best side they've won eight in a row 
Who, who's challenging Collingwood for the best side in the competition right now? Yeah, probably them. Brisbane yeah. at home, yes, oh, but can't. away, no. I can't wait to speak about them. Mm. Um, Melbourne, no. No, Mel- Melbourne's just, and I know you've been, ever since they played the Eagles, you've just been, a, not off them, but you just yeah. have had a question doubts, mark on yeah. them. Yeah. I've got doubts. St Kilda, no. I'm no. just going through the ladder. Western Bulldogs. Or I think there's Western, Western Bulldogs, put, put it this way, I've got as much faith in the Bulldogs as I do at Melbourne at the moment. I think yeah. the Bulldogs forget what happened at the weekend. Yeah, I, it's Mulligan. Yeah. Mulligan, that mm, one. Yeah. Um, like Adelaide, no. Essendon, no. Freo, no. Like, that's where Freo actually half comes in the conversation. I don't think there's that many teams challenging for the flag currently. Um, that's just my thoughts, so skater. Uh, flag mantles back. Collingwood defeat North, Mel- North Melbourne by 35 points. This was your roughie of the week to win by 70. You're nowhere near it, Skeeter. Skeeter by 53 at three-quarter time and then uh, Put just the- said thanks for coming. Skeeter's got, uh, got some uh, hard-earned reputation on this, so we'll just... Uh, Disappear six goals to three and still side bottom 300th game goes off early with a bit of a, a niggle, a bit of an injury. And Mason Cox kicks a big goal in his 100th game, so a regulation win. I have to say, since Rats has taken over, um, they've been competitive, uh, yeah, they have. And I don't know if that's a change in coaches or they're just the you know, the the evolution of the, yeah, team. the up and down sort of nature of footy, whether they're actually correlating or not. Um, I mean, the disappointing thing, he was still side bottom doing his MCL early in his 300th. Mm. I know, I know a couple of boys that flew over for it. It was a bit of a bit of a shindig planned. I'm sure he probably still attended the said shindig. But I, I was thinking the guys that were there to watch the 300th, they would have been set up somewhere. And as soon as he did his knee, they would have been like, right, right off to I'm the a, bar. I'm a gas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mason Cox kicked a couple in his hundredth game. Uh, it's, you know, we spoke about that on uh, Thursday. It's an outstanding achievement for an American uh, here in this sport. It was something he didn't grow up doing. I think that's you know outstanding. Um, Larky kicks five goals. He's a good player. He is kicked five. Um, and can I throw one name at you? I, I'm not sure it's. No, anyway, you answer Jordan this. Jordan was very good too. About to say Jordan to go. Oh. Does he go from uh, Bali? To Brownlow. <laughs> <laughs> Someone write the title right now. <laughs> Barley to Brownlow. Like he was out. He was. He was their best best player. Was it? I mean, he was. He was very good. Close to it. But he, he's. He catches the eye, doesn't he? He's. You know, I think day costs still some votes. No, no. But, but who else? Who else? Hey, in Copeland Trophy terms, he's top five easily. Yeah, this yeah, moment. yeah. Which has been interesting because we haven't heard much out of Jordan Ngoi other than just playing footy. Playing great footy. Yeah, correct. I think he's working in all seriousness with. Um, a psychologist or someone at the club. Just, yep. It really just got him in a good spot. So right. you know, he's and there's no way. And, and even in hindsight, you want to go if if they traded him off yes. to another club. This is exactly what he was uh, entitled to do. He's just got that X factor, which not too many players bring to the game. Now um, you've taken that away from me, Jaden. But you just wrote something interesting there. If you could just put it back in there, where's it gone? You just took it off the run sheet. I just took it off. I didn't think it was. Uh, no, it's absolutely no. needed. So um, Jaden's just found the pronunciation of pronunciation. Uh, of <laughs> <laughs> you complete fuckwit. <laughs> well, I'm maybe. not saying that word again. I'm not saying pronunciation. It again. Uh, I'm not saying it again. Uh, the Irish lad that plays for Geelong. Yeah, go. What's the first part? Like, it's like ooh, yeah, Uisin. ooh, Ushin, Ushin. I said there was an H in there, so okay, Ushin, Ushin, right, Ushin. Yeah, so you got it wrong. Um, like your tips, Collingwood to beat Mount Albert. I would like you to look up the inside fifty count of this next game, please, Jaden. Uh, Adelaide defeat Brisbane. Um, Adelaide defeat Brisbane by seventeen points. So, let's look at this both ways. This game, Adelaide, um, incredibly impressive. Um, Oh, there's a few things. One of them I need to wait for this inside 50 count to speak about, but their midfield was very good. You got it there, Jaden? Yeah, 66-47, uh, Brisbane won. S- 67. <laughs> Extraordinary. 67. 66-47. So Brisbane led the inside 50s by 20. That's almost a record, I would imagine. If you do the numbers on that differential and then the losing margin... I can't see there'd be many games in recent history that would, would even go close to that. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm just throwing it out there that that is just an extraordinary uh, way to lose a game of footy. This is my froth town, frothing moment of the weekend. It was the Adelaide backline skeeter. They were outstanding. You've spoken about them quite, mm. a, quite a bit, right? You've spoken about Adelaide Yeah, backline. big, big yeah. on them. No names. Yeah, no names whatsoever. Young man Worrell, Josh Worrell came into the side for his not first game Frankie of the weekend. Worrell, not, not Frankie Worrell. Uh, it was uh, Josh Worrell. He was outstanding. Um, they subbed him out in the end, but he was very, very good in his first game of the year. Jordan Butts, he's a player. Uh, oh, my man Tom Duday, Geelong boy, 
tell you what he can play. They, they were just outsta- outstanding. Um, Nick Murray, he's very good. Like their back line, I completely frothed what they were doing, mate. They, they just repelled Brisbane all day. Not one ball went inside 50. Uh, an aerial contest, and I thought Brisbane were going to impact it. Like so Adelaide were outstanding. So I was doing the waffle yesterday. So you told me that despite 66 inside entries, that it was not clean footy that came inside for Brisbane. Did they, did they butch the footy, or was Adelaide's defence so good that they, they were able to thwart them? So um, that's my Froth Town moment, right? So you can get your tickets for Froth Town, which is uh, August 18, uh, froth.town. Just go and grab them because they are selling out quick and schedule, drink all the beer otherwise. Look, it was a bit of both. Um, first of all, Adelaide's pressure around the ground was was good and it enabled their backline. Any good backline needs midfield pressure. You can't mm. have free delivery coming inside 50. Um, it was Adelaide's key backs and their aerial backs that were outstanding. But what coupled it was this Brisbane forward line of Hipwood, Danaher, Gunston mm. to an extent. Gunston got subbed out with four kicks, five touches. Um, Danaher kicked two goals. One of them was the biggest out-the-back Joe the Goose goal I've ever seen in my life. Eric Hipwood was so non-existent. It was embarrassing. That, they, that, that, they are a uh, fair-weather team. They are a pristine, as Ross Lyon would put it, looking <laughs> football side that if it doesn't go their way, they're, they're, they're nothing, mate. They, they weren't... They win the inside 50 um, by 20. And honestly, Adelaide were winning this game uh, after they weathered the first storm. It was something like 20 inside 50s to one in the first quarter. Uh, Brisbane kicked one goal mm. in that time. After they weathered that, Adelaide were all over them. And and Brisbane are just this... You, you've been all over this all year. Away from the Gabba... Mate, they had just, some soft kills against Carlton, against North Melbourne. They, uh, and GWS. And, they're the three yeah. away from the Gabba the last eight weeks. And so they've won away from the Gabba, but it's against been against sides that can't play. Carlton and North Melbourne, no good junk. Yeah, GWS are competitive, but not playing finals. Brisbane, this side that's meant to be, you know, but they'll finish top four because of the the work they do, and as you say, pick up those wins against the lowly clubs. They uh, need to change away from home. But, but did you bring up the fact that they need to move on from this game style? No, it was Lee Spur speaking to him. He, he said that. Um, he could see Fagan leaving at the end of this year. You know, yeah, 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 Spurry said the same thing to me. Look, I still think they're finishing top four, which seems extraordinary given the whack we're giving they're, them. They're, well, they're never going to win a final playing like that, mate. They're, well, they'll win a final. Yes, they will. Well, they'll win a final at the Gabba. But the problem is you, you can't win flags at the Gabba. And that's the issue, I think, at hand. And I don't, I'm actually on... And I've picked them to win the flag at the start of this year, but I... I they didn't sip it, mate. And, and, I, and Adelaide wanted it so much more than them. Absolutely. It, that's, I think that's it. I think the appetite that we see from the lines away from the Gabba, it's almost... A bit too hard for them at times. Now, this might sound over the top with the criticism. Now, going back to my theme of captains leading by example, yes. Jordan Dawson. Yep. Again, that's another example of these leaders uh, giving their teams uh, the chance to and win games of footy. Um, you might be listening to this before this happens, but I, I think it's a lay-down Mazaire that Rory Laird gets a week for a tackle he did in this game against uh, Lockie Neal, which would be disappointing. He's one of the best players in the league right now. Dane Zorko with the finger. There was some talk on social media. I'm not sure what that was, but oh, is, that, is he going to get... Uh... He, like, tackled someone. It was Pedler. It was early, and he, and he gave him a little shrug. It wasn't terrible, but... Ended up getting a high tackle for the first goal of the game for Adelaide. And Dorko, uh, Zorko, Dorko, uh, <laughs> Zorko continued on a little bit and wanted to go on with it. And hands were in his face. Not sure what he was doing. Um, uh, Skeeter, six teams in AFL history have lost the grand final and missed the finals the following season. No info on the team. So um, Six individual teams. But I'm saying the two grand yeah, finals. I but I can tell you um, one of them was West Coast in 2015. I'm pretty sure we missed in 2016. No, we didn't. That's, a, that's an absolute lie. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be. I'll get someone to research it. It's not uh, not a, not going to. You know. It's it's a chance. I've got to say. Will Schofield, Mark Reddings, Shallow Footy Cast. You've done your ca- uh, thirsty camel clanger a week. We've said what's frothing. Are you frothing on anything this week for Froth Town Skater? Um, frothing. Actually, I'm frothing to go to watch the. the I'll watch the FA Cup final this Saturday night. I Who's playing in that? Uh, Man City versus Man United. Is there something that? Uh, one of the Gallagher brothers has said that if Man City win the FA Cup, he's ringing his brother and he's getting the band back together. Really? Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. I've, I've seen that doing the rounds. So it's Man City v who? Man United. Really? Yeah, huge. Holy Saturday shit. night, so I'm going to get along and have a look at that somewhere. Shoot. 
Uh, maybe the shoe or, or the Inglewood or somewhere, but I'll, I might have a look at that. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be huge. Well, can I just have one quick clip at the AFL? Oh, the, I would love the, it. The so. buy rounds. Why, can, why don't we just have one weekend off, no footy, therefore players can still go away, do what they've got to do, as opposed to staggered over about three or four weeks, Scully. I, I like just, if you're going to have a break, have a break, then get back into it. I'm trying to think of a counter-argument. I mean, it would have something to do with the media rights, wouldn't it? Having t- uh, having footy on on TV, no, I get that. That that would be a that, fair that, that argument. That would lose, you know, if they if they're paying, um, I don't know, if they're pay- I don't know what they're paying. They're paying tw- twenty two. Uh, what content will the media will TV have on the weekend? That that's a, a, a decent argument, absolutely. Yeah. But from a, a for a season perspective, I, I just think these four weeks feel thin, don't they? Yeah, they, they you you watch one game and you're like, when's the next game starting? And there's an hour, two hour break and. It feels the weekends are thin. Yeah. Have well, they got Thursday night footy over these four weeks or not? No, not to my knowledge. Right. Um, but they're coming back pretty soon, I think. I so think we'll after the, the Tassie game in. If we get the Tassie team in, then we can we can just can, we'll have a bit more thickness in. Yeah, exactly. But in the NRL at the moment, for instance, they've got State of Origin Wednesday night. So they go their teams, their their teams in the NRL Premiership, they're playing without their, their origin players. Yeah, see, so that's outrageous. That is that amazing that. That, that, that their most cherished part of the season is winning a flag or title. Premiership, call it what you want. Yet, because of the status of state of origin, you lose your five players. of your best players. For instance, if you're a good side. Wow. Um, yeah, that is. So you, you'd want to be playing a good side on Origin weekend if you're not a good side, wouldn't you? Totally. Yeah, it gives you a chance. Um, Skeeter, let's. Uh, we've got a listener question. Uh, this is a bit of a delayed email, but I was listening to Mark Reddings on Six PR. I haven't read this yet. It starts well after the West Coast Gold Coast a fortnight ago, and he was talking about the Eagles and the future ahead. Surely. They have to look uh, to the waffle and pick up some players from there in conjunction with going to the draft next year. Wouldn't they want a bit of experience combined with the young kids that could come in? Also, I'm not an Eagles supporter, but do you think Greg Clark is being played out of position as he spent most of his time in the guts at his time at Subiaco in the waffle? Cheers, Nino. Yeah, Nino, I think you're right with Greg Clark. He's more an inside mid, but is he good enough to be that inside mid at the Eagles? I'm not sure. get to Scully to, to comment on that. As for the Eagles moving forward with their waffle team, I've called them yesterday. For instance, uh, Callum Jamison showed some really good signs with his marking around the ground. Yep. Might have been our point, I think, in the ruck against Scotty Jones, but certainly looks... Looks as if he's heading in the right direction. Just on that point, mm-hmm. um, West Coast, and you can put this in line with every other AFL in the competition, took the complete piss with their team lineups on the weekend. Callum Jamison, a laid out, clearly wasn't playing if he plays the next day. He was yeah. never playing. So, Zave O'Neill was always playing by the looks of things. We, we need some, that's a real bug bear Transparency. We need some transparency, some clarity from clubs. This is who's playing. This is not who's not playing. Talk about Skeeter, bad beats, that sort of stuff. But there's a lot of money in betting. There's fantasy footy. There's <clears throat> there's literal money on the line for tips. There's fans. People actually give a shit who's playing on the weekend. And the AFL clubs just take the piss regularly. So he was one of them. Anyway, continue okay. on. Okay. Yep. Uh, yesterday, Campbell Chesser. Yep. So, so. Zane True was good. 30 touches. Yep. Elijah Hewitt, um, minimal impact. But bear in mind, some of these players are, are coming back from injury. So on that basis... Uh, yeah, the waffle will be looked at just very quickly because before we, or next time we convene, uh, the mid-season draft will have taken place. So off the back of that, there's a guy from Victoria, played a couple of goals in the VFL Marich. I think it's Ryan Marich, who the Eagles look like they'll take as their number one pick. He's a, a forward of, of sorts. Locally, these are the guys to keep an eye out for. Robert Hanson Jr., been sick last week and a bit of talk that maybe he's... Um, been hidden away by maybe a club or two. But anyway, Docker's chasing him. Not sure he'll get to Fremantle as it stands in yes. the draft. So there's plenty of clubs chasing him. Jack Buller from Claremont, who yep. had a bit of a knock to the calf at the weekend playing in the waffle. He'll come under notice as well. And a guy called Jaden Hunter, who kicked five goals for Perth as the Demons beat South Fremantle. My club, we had a victory in the waffle. Kicked five. So just keep an eye on him also to, to be picked up. But there's 23 West Aussies that have put their... Hat in the ring, nominated for the draft this week. Right. Um, look, in all honesty, it's probably going to be, you know, two or three from WA. What at day best. is it on? I'm pretty sure it's uh, Wednesday the 31st. Is that, is that Wednesday? Yes. Yeah, so that's that's where we're heading. So, look, it's not the be all and end all, but we saw Jai Cully come out of it last season, and the Eagles will participate. That's yep. my gut feeling. You? Durham was picked up from Essendon in the mid season. He's turning yep. a really good player. And so was. Uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio, yep. who played his first game against St Kilda last year, had 40 as a sub again, I think, on the weekend. Yep. Um, so there's some really good stories that come out of it. But yeah, from a, a perspective of, of recruiting for the Eagles, um, I'm thinking the waffle, 
not so much. I'm working my way towards number one pick, Harley Reid. Do you keep him or do you split it? I'm with you. I split, as they did this season with their or end of last year with the likes of, of Ruben Jimby and Elijah Hewitt. They gave up uh, yep. a pick to, to – broad, what's one player ain't going to – unless no. it's Chris Judd. Go again. Go again. You need, to, you need to split it up. Very good call. Uh, a couple of call-outs from our listeners, Skeeter. I don't mind this. A little bit of a mini fine session here. This is from Luke Johnson. Scoey, 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 scoey. This is, this is, I'm reading this out. Once again, the favourite loses again on the first game. Um, so this was the Sydney Carlton game. Yeah, I know. And you said on the pod you would tip Sydney. But what do we have here? Luke Johnson's gone deep into some sort of tipping competition I'm in. Not sure which one. I'm assuming it's the Shelter Footy Cast one. And I've picked Carlton. Well, this is, this is your, your, your lies, your web of deceit is being exposed. Because you just talk absolute shite to me about, at least I'm honest, I tip a team oh, and leave it there. Skeeter, the, the, honest, <laughs> honest, the, uh, the honest bloke, the man's man. Yeah, shut up, idiot. People's uh, person. <laughs> runner, Ryan Robertson has a fine for Skeeter. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Ryan Robertson's written in here. He's got a little pitch up. And he says, uh, he said, doesn't look like a shelter to me, Skeeter, and it's you. Um, what am I drinking? Standing having a, I won't say the brand. Have I been papped, have I? But you've been, <laughs> you've been papped. Have a look at this. Look, someone's papped you. Right. Oh, that's at the uh, that's at the Goswell's Footy Club. The, yeah. Go- the Gozzy Footy Club. Oh, no, yeah. no doubt, you had some celebrity status out there. Oh, <laughs> CBJ was my uh, partner in crime. Yeah, who's that again? Uh, it's Ryan. Ryan. Uh, Ryan came and said good day, and he said he's going to find me for this. So, yep. Ryan, shout out to you, you knucklehead. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was, you know, I was drinking. They, they had VB. I was going to say that looked like a grenade. No, it's a VB. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, didn't have shelter there, so hence uh, went that way. Oh, well, lift lift Gozzy's Footy Club. You get the shelters out at the Gozzy Footy I, Club. I'll tell you one quick. They had a fine system in place in. Bre- there and the bloke came up with the tats and he gave the fines out. It was really it was quite a funny young bloke. He said, "Hey, I got a fine." He goes for a bit of a bit of a story here. Now, there's a bloke who was on his phone and uh, he was uh, standing by, and then he he, he handed his phone to his daughter or two year old. Ended up with it. Um, as it turns out, the bloke who had the phone. Um, had left it on Pornhub, <laughs> and so his, I think his daughter, I think, thank goodness he was young, uh, ended up with the phone, and the, the bloke who did it was the president. So, uh, so the so that's got it goes was a prez, um, brave that like it is. The house down. Prez, I thought, and we just pissed ourselves. We thought that was just absolute roll goal. So he gets a fine for uh, having his. Mobile phone on Pornhub. So we might need to get a slab of uh, shelters out to the Gozzi football clubs, maybe to the president. <laughs> a slab, that, yeah. that'll last them an hour. The shelter XPA X Factor of the week. I think this is a lay down for disaster, Skeeter. Don't worry about Oscar yeah. Allen in the West Coast game. Oh. No, no, I'm thinking going, going for while you're up. Yes, great. But no, you... you Luke Jackson. Yeah, a mine. player I was thinking of. Good. He stands up, big game against his old side. Loses his partner in crime in Sean Jackson, uh, Sean Jackson, Sean Darcy, and has to hold up the fort. And he does a brilliant job, and he gets the Shelter XBA X Factor of the week. We'll get a slab of those out. Thank you, Jaden. To uh, Luke, I reckon he looks like he'd uh, drain a couple of shelters as well. Shelter Footy Cast, you can follow us on socials. Give us an email at footycast at shelterbrewing.com today. Send us a fine. If you see Skeeter out drinking piss and it's not a shelter, <laughs> send me photos. We're going to get inundated this week with photos. Uh, that was a fun session, Skeeter. All the best. Let's go again. <laughs>